If you are watching this video, you probably have a fruit tree to train. I can help you with that. Even from here, he's too loud. We have something really cool here, which is a fruit tree that we've been training for several videos. And we're gonna look at what we did so far, what the results of that were in terms of us getting what we want and where to go from here, like set it up for the next year's growth and beyond. Real life, this is actually what happens when you apply these techniques that I'm gonna show, which are progressive techniques. They will apply to a lot of different trees, but I unfortunately haven't been able to put in and carry out the long-term trials with dozens of trees that I would like to. Unfortunately my position on the homestead here is somewhat sketchy right now and I'm not sure if I'll be able to stay or where I'm going to be working so I can't set those trials up right now um, until that's all sorted out but my experience so far using these progressive tree training methods is absolutely awesome when I moved here I knew way more than the average person about training fruit trees but I still didn't know that much it turns out and I followed the same recommendations that everyone else used that you find everywhere you go on the net and that turns out go back literally centuries. I was disappointed in the results. I was disappointed in how long it took. I was disappointed in the fact that it seemed hard to get the branches that I wanted where I wanted to get the forms that everyone was recommending because people were recommending, oh, grow your fruit tree and train it like this, but then do it like this. And it just wasn't really working out. Then I found this amazing study that was done in the 1920s, which studied the frameworks of apple trees. This was great science. It surveyed the literature going back centuries. They talked to farmers, actually, like real life farmers that do this stuff on the ground. They looked at what was causing trees to fail and die, and then they set about to make a new system of fruit tree training that would get results faster and make stronger, longer lived trees. Awesome study. Unfortunately, it seems to have been a total flop and just disappeared into the fog of history. Fortunately, I found this and I'm just the person that should have found it because I'm actually gonna do something with it. And I'm not just going after kind of like talking to fruit nerds like me, but I wanna go for the whole enchilada. I wanna blow up fruit tree training, completely modify it, and basically replace the stupid standard recommendations that failed me so well. So again, keep in mind, this is a work in progress. I'm interested in getting you guys involved so you can tell me how it works for you and try it on different species until I can get whatever I need. I need resources, I need money, basically. I need more money so I can uh, do large scale trials with uh, lots of different fruit species. From this point on up there, about uh, five feet or so, was just a straight stem with no branches. It actually had two branches, one here, I think, but I cut them off because they weren't high enough and I wanted to start with a tree that was basically like a whip. A whip, or also called a maiden, is just a stick with a bunch of buds on it. Blank canvas, right? It's a stick with buds. So we can take those buds and we can try to manipulate them to do exactly what we want. To get branches where we want, in what directions we want, how many we want. The tree form I'm going for is called the Modified Central Leader. It has three to four main large branches that go out and up. Nice big branches, not very many, but they're big. And a top that's shortened off, that's a little bit smaller. The idea is that these big branches go out and they're almost like trunks of a tree and they compete with the top because they're so big. So as the resources are coming up the tree, they get diverted into these large branches and there's less left for the top to grow. So you get this co-dominance effect where dominance of the, the upper growth is shared by the whole tree and it keeps the top from running wild. So it's easier to reach, it makes a strong, long-lived, open, uh, often kind of umbrella-shaped tree. Not the only system, there's lots of systems, but that's what we're going for here. So each of these branches, I want to go out in a different direction and kind of fill a space out, right? So fill out a quarter of the space that the tree takes up. And in this case, there's a hill behind me and I don't want the deer to be able to get to these branches like they could right here. But if it grows off and down the hill, then the deer are gonna have a harder time reaching up to get it. And then there's a roadbed right where you are and I wanted these branches to be the highest that go off in that direction. So this one and this one, then I'll have room to drive underneath it. 
So the way that I did that is I left groups of buds and I picked all the other buds off the tree except at the top. I picked zones like right here where I wanted a branch, right here, right here, and right here. And I removed all the other buds and just left three buds in a cluster at each site that I wanted a branch. So what that does is as resources are coming up the tree, the resources are kind of limited, right? So if you leave all the buds on the tree, like some of them will grow a lot, some of them will grow a little, and some of them will stay dormant. But if I leave only, what was it, 12 buds on this tree, except for the ones of the, a few at the top, the tree's gonna go, oh, I need to grow something, what's there? Well, there's only 12 buds, so we're gonna grow all of them out. So if I just left it that way, I would be able to come back in all likelihood and then just select three of these branches that go in the directions I want. But I added another technique technique called notching to get these branches that I selected, the ones I wanted to grow the most, the ones that are going to be my permanent scaffold branches, I wanted those to grow more this year and bigger. So I use something called notching. Now the top of the tree, when it gets up there, it's like I'm king of the hill, I'm the boss, I'm going up, all you peons down here grow outward and make fruit and shade the ground and just form the canopy of the tree, right? So the top is sending these signals down, hormonal signals, and if you cut a notch right above the bud, it stops that signal. Remarkably effective in most cases. So on each bud that I picked out that I was like, yes, I want this bud to grow as the main scaffold, I cut a notch in it. Now, why did I leave the other extra buds? Number one, insurance. If this breaks, which I did, I broke this by accident, watch this. But I don't think I'm going to. Oh no, I broke it. See, I broke it. I was able to repair it in this case and we're gonna take a close look at that later. But what if I broke that all the way off? Like if I broke it right at the uh, trunk here, it's game over. So then I have these other extra branches to pick and I can easily sort that out. I could say, well, we're gonna do this one in this direction and this one in that direction, problem solved. So insurance is number one. Second, how does a tree eat? it eats sunlight. So in order to get sunlight, it needs leaves, which are solar panels. If I leave extra branches on like this, it has more little solar panels to collect more energy, which makes carbohydrate. It grows the stem thicker, it grows more roots, it stores energy for next year, it makes more leaves to gather even more sunlight. You want those extra shoots growing for the first year, but this year we're gonna take those off and just leave the main scaffolds. And then I did one more thing, which is as these grew out, when they were a little bit long, but they were still pretty soft and like new uh, soft wood, I bent them down and put these clothespins here to get the branches to grow out at a wider angle. If you have a branch that grows really upright, like this one's kind, none of these are too bad, but this one's kind of upright. But if it grows really upright, this forms like a real narrow V crotch right in here. And as this gets bigger and that gets bigger, bark will start to get trapped in that V if it's really sharp like this. So you want these to come out at 45 degrees or more if possible. I just wanted to put these clothes pits on to assure that would happen. We're gonna look at how those interventions worked out, how we're gonna set this tree up for the rest of this year. All right, let's take a close look. So remember the reason I notched those buds was to get them to grow out bigger than the rest of the uh, other shoots on the tree. Let's take a look at how that went. We'll start at the bottom here. Let's just go ahead and cut these off and compare them. So in this case, that worked. We're gonna take off this and this. So this one was just a little bit shorter. Well, it grew to there. So yeah, they were shorter as well. And, and this one I also cut back last year a little bit. This one and this one, again, we don't need these now. Now these branches would just compete with these branches and we don't want that. We want these to grow really, really vigorously. Like I want these things to be uh, three feet long by the end of this season. This, a uh, huge difference there, right? Gigantic difference. And again, uh, much longer. That was successful. When you notch these, they tend to grow out at a more upright angle. Again, it's the top of the tree is saying, I'm the top of the tree, I'm, I'm dominant, I'm gonna grow up, you guys grow down. But when you disrupt the hormonal signals like this and the bud is still dormant, so I'd notch this when this bud was totally dormant, then the bud's like, oh no, I need to be the top of the tree because there's no top of the tree. It's not getting a signal that there's already a top of the tree. And so it tries to grow up. So if I hadn't like bent this out with a clothespin or something, it probably would have been going more like up like this. So that's kind of actually a problem. And one of my possible solutions for that that I'll be experimenting with is leaving the groups of buds, just like I said, and not notching them until they start to grow out. But as soon as they start to grow out, that bud angle, that branch angle is already established. So when this is just like even one inch long, then I can come in here and notch that and it should still have the same effect of driving that growth harder. 
So this is how I bend the branches down to grow outward. If I hadn't done this, let's take a look. This branch would be growing about like this, which is too tight. It needs to be out more. So now you can see as this grows big and that grows big, it's just gonna grow out and there, no bark will get trapped in here. So the top of the tree, you can see where it branches and forks right there, I cut that off. And what I want from the top of the tree in this type of form, you know, remember these are gonna be really big and thick, all these branches, is I want the top to be kind of smaller. So by having like a three to four, two to four like branches like that coming off, it kind of splits the growth up at the top even more and will help kind of keep it down just a little bit. And it also just kind of fills in that space up there at the top. So we're gonna use this ARS Long Reach Pruner. I'm gonna put a, a link to this in a, like an affiliate link to Amazon in the description, but this should be a purchase that's well considered. It's very expensive. I'll tell you in a second who it's good for. I'm gonna take this off completely. I'm gonna take this off completely. I wanna bring this way down. I'm tempted to bring it even further than that. You know, I'm just gonna take this off too. And we'll regrow this whole top. I'm not in a hurry at all to establish the top. In fact, I wanna cut it way back and stunt it so that these guys can catch up. Because remember again, we're going for co-dominance. We want these to share dominance with the top of the tree. So if I can get these out ahead a little bit and like more established, um, that'll help. So getting this down is a, a good thing. So yeah, this tool, let me put it here so you can take a look at it. It telescopes to 10 feet. It works really good. Like on green wood, it can cut up to three quarters of an inch as long as you're cutting at an angle. And it's great for older people that don't wanna get on ladders. Like you get to a certain age and if you fall and break your hip, it's kind of game over for a lot of people. It's great for fruit nerds who are out collecting fruit, flowers for pollen, uh, cuttings, for, you know, science for grafting and stuff like that. If you have tall trees, it's basically awesome. I mean, there's really, <laughs> if you have trees or deal with trees that are taller than you can reach from the ground, it's pretty awesome, but it is expensive. I think it's probably 130 bucks or more. So it's something to consider. And then the other thing is, um, I'm gonna put an affiliate link to Amazon, but I think you could probably find it cheaper somewhere else so you might want to shop around not that i don't uh want your money but i'm just a bad capitalist i'd rather earn your trust than your money at this point okay so let's take a look now at one last thing which is this repair that i did so in the uh, previous video, I cracked this because i was bending it down but i just bent it a little too far i was kind of being a little too picky about the angle. I knew it was really broken. Like if I had let go of it, it would have just bro fallen and broken. I had to actually hold it in place. Wrapped it with plastic really tight. And then I put a small stick on there too and wrapped that on for a splint. It might've slowed the growth a little bit, but not very much. So I really expected these to grow a lot more, like maybe this bigger one, absolute minimum. But in early summer, this tree just stopped growing. I don't know why but it was definitely hormonal. You know, I watered it and fertilized it early in the summer. It didn't respond. I did it again, it still didn't respond. So late in the summer, I was like, I should try just nipping the tips of the branches back to see if it like wakes them up and stimulates them to grow. And I did that, but it was really late in the summer and it just didn't grow back much. But you can see, all of the ones where I did nip it off um, did grow back except this one because it tried and it was eaten by a bug. But this one here, and then I left this one as a control and it did not grow back. So if this does that again, I, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But the tree maybe has its own wisdom or it's just stupid, <laughs> I don't know which it is, um, but you know, it didn't conform to my plans. But I do expect these branches to grow a lot more this year. I mean, I would really expect these to grow like two feet each at least this year. And that's because they have a lot fewer growing points now. And you know, some of these side things here are gonna grow out as branches, but we should get a lot of extension on the, the main tips of these guys here. We only have four main branches and the top. And so again, as energy is coming up the tree, we have resources, sugar, minerals, water. It gets diverted into these branches and fewer growing points than it would have if I hadn't cut all that stuff off. And then it should drive a lot of growth in these guys. Now, what I would do with this this year is nothing. Aside from keeping an eye on this to make sure that these are extending and they don't stop in early summer like they did last year and just quit growing, 
in which case I will try to intervene with both extra water and fertilizer and nipping the tips back to see if I can stimulate those to grow. I'm not going to do anything. I can just let this grow. It's done for the year. Now, next winter, what I'll do is before this stage, before these buds break out, I would go along the long branch. Let's say this branch grows another two feet. So I come out here and I'm like, um, I would like to have a secondary scaffold come off of this because the point of this branch is to go out in this area and fill that one quarter of the round space that's going to be the tree, right? So in order to do that, it needs to send out what's called the secondaries uh, along here that kind of go out and fill that space in. And those are also like main structural wood. You wanna think of the tree as having two kinds of wood, structural wood, which is just like the framework. And then the fruiting wood is on the structural wood and that's what produces your fruit every year. You know, 18 inches up here, I want a, a secondary scaffold to come off here. Well, I can go up here, pick a bud, notch right above the bud, again, just like we did here. And that will, in all likelihood, make that bud grow out into a longer side branch. So cool. I don't know anyone that does that, but it's brilliant. It totally works. Um, you know, it's not 100% consistent. Nothing is in fruit tree training. It's not that kind of game. You know, at the end of two years of that, like pretty much things are going along and you're just gonna be doing maintenance pruning and not a lot of training, which is much quicker than you would kind of expect uh, most tree training to go. Not only that, I have everything exactly where I want it. This branch right here is slightly more this way than I want. I'd like it to go kind of that way. So I'm gonna cut it to a bud that's facing down and out that way. And I also could take this and just kind of bend it a little bit like that uh, with a wire and by you know midsummer this will just be set that way permanently. So while I've got this tree set up to do everything I want it to do I'm actually going to cut all these off to two inches and graft new varieties on them because I want this to be a five variety Franken tree. One at the top one for each scaffold here and then as that grows out I can just keep adding more varieties. I can add dozens of different pair varieties if I want to. In fact the tree right behind you that you can't see but I'll cut in a picture of had a hundred different varieties of apples on it. Fruit, actual fruit last year. When you learn to graft every tree you plant is a blank canvas. Every tree you have already, every fruit tree is a blank canvas. You can add stuff you like, you can take off stuff you don't like, you can find out about weird apples like uh, red fleshed apples or other fruits, red fleshed pears, there's also red fleshed pears on the internet and get those. Maybe you could get some of the seedlings that I'm growing from seed, but the only way you're gonna get those is to graft them. Nobody has a tree that I grew from seed that they didn't graft unless a friend grafted it for them because I've grafted no trees and sent them out. I've only sent out cuttings. And that may be the case ongoing. I may graft some trees in the future, but for now, if you want any of these apples that I'm growing from seed, like black strawberry, ice princess, bite me, sugar wood. So if you want to have that amazing versatility and awesomeness on your fruit trees, learn to graft. Click that playlist right there. It covers everything you need to know start to finish about grafting with dormant wood. Or click on this playlist to follow the history of this tree over the last year. But that also includes a video on the modified central leader and delayed open center forms of trees and explains them in a way that you can actually understand. Pick one. You know you want to watch it.